Hey, everybody. Hello. <laughs> so maybe just for Coralie's benefit as a newbie on the call, perhaps you want to just um, introduce yourselves, just say a quick hello and where you are. And I don't know, you can say whatever you like, but um, just, just a quick intro. Glenn, you were first. Do you want to start off? Yeah, morning or evening, everyone. Um, yeah, so as it says there, Glenn, I don't live too far away from Tony. I actually live closer to the beach than Tony does. And don't, don't, and he probably get he probably gets to the beach more often than I do, though. I've uh, been a Noble Goldman Gold Star member for about ten months, I think. Yeah, when there's only about a couple of thousand members, um, find it yeah find it very very good. I've been absent from this calls for a little while because of other business commitments, but I um, uh, find it great now getting it back into. This is my third inside a week. I'm getting yeah, Ooh. it's good now. So yeah, welcome everybody. Enjoy it. Have fun. Well done. Who was next on? I think uh, Vicky turned up next, didn't she? Uh, uh, sure, I'll go. Uh, so I'm Vicky. I'm in Montreal, Canada, but I'm from the USA originally. So I like to call myself an import. <laughs> uh, I've been here 21 years now. Uh, it, it's there's no beach. There's no there's no sun. There's no <laughs> sandy warm weather. <laughs> so I appreciate Tony putting up that lovely beach scene behind him because I need it. Um, I've been part of Noble Goldman since June. So I've been here for nine months, 10 months, whatever. Uh, love it, very happy with it. Social worker by profession, writer, author, mother, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> uh, I, think that's, I think that's good. Well done, thank you. Uh, Stan, your background appeared. I think you were the next, but I'm not quite sure, but. <laughs> Oh, another one. Sorry, Tony. I, I thought I had enough time to make a cup of coffee, <laughs> cup of tea. <laughs> well, look, extra people. Uh, what's going on here, Tony? I don't know. That's because I'm reminding people. Sometimes it's just me and Tony, and today it's like 55 people. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so I'm a moving forward and goal success coach. Uh, I don't live near the beach. <laughs> um, okay see we can have a few words like bunyips beaches and bollywood <laughs> there you go <laughs> fair enough <laughs> all right um v, would you like to go next just a quick intro and hello yeah sure i'm veronica but people call me v so that makes it easier um i'm not i'm kind of in between i guess tony and glenn um location wise um yeah, what can I say? I've been in Noble Goldman since October, I think, and absolutely loving it. And um, have gone from like being quite disheartened with goal setting to um, now romping them in. So yeah, <laughs> enjoy it. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, um, Coralie. Uh, you you have already spoken. I don't know if you want to mention anything again because we've got a couple of new people on the call there. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I also, I do have a day job. I'm a support worker. I look after a family with special needs children. And, um, I, and I'm in Wellington, New Zealand. And while it's summer, it's cold today. <laughs> well done. Coralie had already given a quick intro, but I thought since there's a couple of new people on there. Uh, who we got next? Christopher, I think. Hey, hi, I'm Chris and I live in Sydney. Just moved here um, two years ago, and I have known Tony for, gosh, be a decade now. I <laughs> what a few years. <laughs> yeah, yes, and uh, yeah, I um, uh, I just got a cat, so um, I put him outside. He's been quite a handful. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So we have a crazy cat man on the call. Well done. Um, Carly. Hi, I'm Carly Bolo. I'm from Newcastle, near Sydney. My other name is Joanne, but that's my birth name. My spiritual name is Carly Bolo. It means eternal presence and chopping the head off the ego and energetically in deep love. Just thought I'd share that so you know. <laughs> Thank you. I always wondered what that was. I knew I, I knew that Carly was had got um, connotations of Mother Earth or something to do with that. But yeah. Very good. Um, and Tony, we've got a new, is it Tony? Uh, Tony Antonio? 
how you doing? Would you like to just say a quick hello and where, where you're from and how you, what led you to Noble Goldman? Hello, I'm Tony. I'm from Toronto. I'm a high school teacher, yoga teacher. And how did I land here? I um, joined a Facebook group for Neville Goddard and a beautiful lady named Celeste the same day said, would you like to lead a mastermind group in Neville Goddard? And I said, sure. And we've been doing that now for about two months with a great group and uh, it's been going very nicely and I've uh, made some new friends. It's uh, thanks to Vicky actually, who was in that group and uh, branched off into her Florence Skull Shin group, which I'm really enjoying. And she said to me, hey, there's some great people and uh, I'm glad to be here. My high school teacher, it's a very busy time now. We're getting kids back to school. So it was a busy day. So I had to make a commitment to be here with all of you beautiful people. And I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. And that's all. Thank you very much. And it's uh, and a very warm welcome to you. Um, so that's great. I, for those couple who may not know me then, I'm Tony, I'm hosting the call today. Uh, I live in, actually in the Perth Hills. I've got a beach background and you can blame Vicky for that because uh, we were on a call last night and she was complaining about the cold in Canada. And she said, I just want to be on the beach with Tony down in, down in Australia. So I, I put up a beach background for her. Uh, that's typical of our beautiful Western Australians, white sandy coastlines that we have here. Um, but yes, I live in the Perth Hills. We've, you might have, some of you might have heard, we've had a few bushfires going on. Well, a massive bushfire actually uh, destroyed about 70 odd homes or maybe 80, I think overnight. I'm not sure it's the numbers keep going up, but um, we've got fire crews working relentlessly on that. I think there's about 500 fire crew out there working on it. So it's a big, big fire. Um, anyway, that aside, what I thought, how we normally work on these calls is we usually pick a topic for the day. I'll mention what the topic is, and then what we do is we'll just go through the Noble Goldman principles to kick off the call and to sort of set the tone for the meeting. Um, today's topic is leadership, and uh, I thought it's something we, we could explore, because last week we talked about character. So, uh, but let's get the Noble Goldman, or just share a screen for a second, bear with me while I while I find the um, lost my share screen button now. Where's it gone? It's usually either at the top or the bottom. Yeah, oh, there it is. It was hiding from me right in front of me. I was just having a man look for it, you know? You heard a man looking? Okay, yep, yep, okay. On surfing. <laughs> <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll just give everybody, your, as Martin says last night, you're, you're not numbers to me, but I'll give you all a number for the purposes of reading this out. So we'll go in the, the order that you um, sort of appeared. So Glenn, you can be number one, Vicky number two, Stan number three, V number four, Coralie number five, Chris number six, Carly number seven, uh, Tony number eight, and I'll round off with number nine. So uh, just to read out each of the numbered paragraphs. So Glenn, would you like to kick us off? Certainly. Mastermind principles. The purpose of a mastermind is to learn leadership, build teams, and create multiple sources of income together. We are here to inspire and challenge each other to reach and exceed goals. Uh, each member is committed to their own success as well as the success of every member of the group. We are committed to meeting in person or virtually for one hour every week. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We've got to change screen. Number five is Coralie. Um, we are present. There is no multitasking or distractions during meetings. We are collaborative. We listen without interrupting, lecturing or judging. We celebrate each other's successes without jealousy. And Tony, we still have Tony. I started reading muted, sorry. We are honest and participated by giving thoughtful feedback. Thank you, don't worry, we've all done that. Oh, and that's me. We are open and listen to different perspectives without being defensive or offering excuses. We trust fellow members enough to share fully. 
We are focused, but we also think it's important to have fun during meetings. Absolutely. Uh, we are real, authentic. This is a no BS zone. We allow ourselves to become completely aligned with each other and the high forces, one mind, one soul, one love. And since we're on a roll and we've got lots of people, we might as well do the mission statement. So Coralie again. Oh, okay. Noble Goldman International is a conscious, aware and engaged global community of abundance and freedom creators. Our mission is to create one million millionaires who are free from the time for money paradigm. We focus on creating multiple streams of income through masterminding, team building and the effective utilization of the internet-based platforms. Mastermind becomes an opportunity for self-mastery, where the self-transcendent shift from the me to the we to the us occurs. As congruence and engagement increases, the world's consciousness is then raised one meaningful and inspired relationship at a time. Okay, sorry, Carly, you missed out on your last one there, but uh, that, thank you everyone for doing that. That sets the the rules of engagement, so to speak, for how we're going to conduct the meeting. Um, as we do have a few people on the call today, probably a good idea to ask people just to um, mute your um, speaker just when you're not speaking. And uh, if you want to say something or add, we have a chat box there. Um, I'm not sure for the newbies how, how many of you have previously attended. Um, so there's a little chat box at the bottom there. You can type in any comments you want to add. There's also a reactions button down the bottom of your page where you can put snazzy little reactions like smiley faces or a thumbs up or go away or whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, we wouldn't do that, of course. Um, but yeah, if, and there's also you can, if you go to the, I think it's on the video button, there's a hand raised somewhere. No, where is it? Can anyone remember where the hand raise is? It's on the reactions as well. It's oh, okay. on the bottom on mine. Okay. There. Thanks, Glenn. So yeah, so if anyone, uh, we will get to you or just put your hand up if I see you on the screen, we'll, we'll come to you as soon as we can. Um, and we'll try to not talk over each other as much as we possibly can. Um, so the topic today is leadership. And so I've, just to sort of set the tone, I've got a few questions to for you to consider. Are leaders born or developed? I know it's an old question, um, but it's certainly one just worth discussing. And what makes a good leader? What are the traits that make a good leader? And who do you admire most as leaders? Um, you can bring up political figures if you want. Obviously, we don't want to get into political arguments. So, um, you know, if you if you particularly disagree with a political figure, someone else might bring up Don't keep that to yourself. Um, my raise hand is in participants. Oh, is it? That's interesting. Let's have a look. Okay. Um, it's not on mine, but this must be different as the host. Maybe. I don't know. No. So, Tony, it depends on what version of Zoom people have. Ah, thank you, Vicky. See, so there's, it's, there's always someone better, that knows. You're, you're better off going with reactions. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, we'll start off just in the in the order of numbers, I guess, if, um, if you have something that you want to say, and if you don't have anything you want to say, you can say, we'll come back to you and pass on to the next person. But Glenn, do you reckon leaders are born or developed? And what do you think makes a good leader? That's tough, actually. And I think the city looking at me being number one, I think he's going to come straight at me. <laughs> <laughs> that horrible feeling. <laughs> that horrible feeling. Oh, this one's going to be me. Um, you're looking at different people that I respect as leaders, um, either global figures or people that I've worked with that have been good leaders, some have been good, some have been terrible, I won't swear. Um, and then people that I know that have changed over time. So some could say they've been born into it, people think they've been born into it. Um, but I've seen others that have been developed, um, not blowing my own trumpet, but <laughs> me. I think um, I wasn't when I worked in a previous role, but then with a bit of training and a bit of sort of looking at myself and what I was doing, I sort of probably changed the way that I led people. Um, just that the roles were completely different and you had to have a different slant on things. Um, what makes a good leader? 
is for me anyway, and the feedback that I've got over the years is listening to people around you, working with people around you, not telling them what to do, but you know, working with them um, to not, you know, by by example, you know, do as I say, not as you know, and as and and as I do. Um, but it is, yeah, a big thing for me was when I first started working one of the roles in Perth was to actually work with the team and, and see what they thought was actually going on and what, what, what could be changed rather than, I think it's this way and it should be done this way. And I've worked with leaders like that in the past and all you get is resentment and not great things. Excuse me for two seconds. Oh. Denise just going off to work, my wife. Um, who do I admire as a leader? Um, yeah, there's a couple of guys that I worked with um, when I was in London and they just, I still go back now thinking to myself in this situation, what would such and such do? And, you know, so that's always something to me that brings around. There's one particular guy that's just like, no, no BS, just, just get on there, just get, just do it. Don't get caught up in the, um, you know, all the stuff that's going on at the moment. Don't get caught up in the drama of it all. Just get on, just get on and do the job basically. Um, political yep. leaders. Right. Yeah, probably running out of time. Yeah, I'm just conscious I've got 10, 10 people on the call today. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, I think that's that's a, and the re I'll just qualify. The reason I brought this question today was in Noble Goldman, we're very much about developing leaders. We're, we're, we're looking to, for you to grow, if you wish to grow your business, um, and you don't necessarily have to, obviously some of you may just want to uh, enjoy the mastermind groups and the personal development but if you want to go on to be a gold star member and seek to build your own teams then you know um, at some point you probably want to host a mastermind yourself and you, you by by default you sort of set yourself up to become a leader so as mark said in in um, a recent call mark santos who's the the person who started all this is we are looking to develop leadership so I think that's a great point there, Glenn, with when you find yourself in a situation and you go, well, what would so-and-so do in this situation? That means that, you know, it's, they've left their mark on you as being a leader whom you respect. So thanks for that. That's a good chair. Um, now, would you prefer to go in order of the numbers or do you want to just uh, free range? I knew Glenn could cope with the pressure of being you ask. A cab off the rank. <laughs> So if anyone's feeling a bit reluctant to speak, you don't have to. So um, would you would you prefer I'll have just, to the numbers? Oh, I'll, I'll go next if you're happy. Go on then. Okay. Um, so for me, leadership, I, I feel like you're both. You're born it and you create it. When, we, when we're born, we, we have the infinite possibility of being anything. It's just our family circumstances change all that, as in what we've learnt from our zero to seven years habits and family choices and lineage. So realistically, we're born perfect. We can choose anything. We just don't know that as we get a bit older, we forget, we forget that. Yeah. Um, once we awaken back to that, we have the choice to be a leader if we choose. And it's all up to ourselves individually because we can't just have leaders we need both yes you can't yes, just yes. be an i without the we and yep. the us very good so um i guess if i had to pick someone i admire as a leader it would be myself oh <laughs> and i will leave it there Great. Thank you for that. That's that's very good. Something we will explore in a minute as well about uh, I, I, I think leadership does start with yourself. You have to lead yourself before you can lead others. So we can uh, we can explore what that means as we go on. Who'd like to add anything to that? Vicky. So I'll go. I believe it's both. I'm like Callie. Um, you, you're born with it. But I think as life experience happens to you it develops more if that makes sense and there are times that you become more of a leader and you push yourself more and you put yourself out there more 
Yeah. Uh, I'm a, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking of myself when I say that. Um, I, I love Noble Goldman for the fact that it gives the opportunity for people to explore and grow. And, you know, I've been part of it since June. I have nothing but positive things to say, to be honest. You know, I, I run a couple masterminds, I co-facilitate I co a couple, and I've just loved the opportunity, the growth, the support, the encouragement. I, I can say nothing but positive things, and that's how I describe it when I talk to people, to be honest. Um, but I think you have to be ready. So some people may not be ready when that opportunity comes, and it's a choice. So either you choose to go that direction or you don't. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's kind of where I am. Um, I'm not sure what else to say, to be honest. <laughs> well, that's, that's great. Thank you. Good, good input there. Yeah, Tony. So leadership is a very important thing. Um, I'm a curriculum leader for the arts in my school. Um, I'm the union rep for the school and so on. Leadership really comes down to caring and commitment to the people that you're working with. People really know when they can trust you and when you're committed to them. Even when you fall short of the ideal, people know when you're trying your best and you're committed to an outcome. Now leadership also entails you knowing and mastering something, having something to contribute that you're passionate about and that you believe in. And there's a specific and measurable outcome that you can promise. Like today I established my classes with my kids and I made various promises to them by the end of my course, they will be able to improvise, write a script, play a character, design a set, make a lighting design. I also promised them they would know everything they needed to about mental health. And I know I can provide those outcomes because I've done it before. And I keep on improving and refining that base. And I've got younger student teachers now from universities coming in that I can mentor and share that wisdom with, but also learn from. So those are things that it's all about contribution and it's really leadership is about love, loving the people you're with, being committed to them um, and sharing something that you feel will make a in their lives, I have to say. That's a powerful share. Thank you so much for that one. And is there anyone that stands out for you, Tony, as a leader that you admire? There's so many different people that I, I you know, I'm touched by, um, you know, in terms of the work that they have done. I guess the one that's coming to mind, I always sort of open the field and see who comes. Mother Teresa is one of them, you know, selflessly sort of, you know, handing up bowls to the poor. You know, um, simple things, right? We make it complicated. It's not that complicated. Simple act, right? Helping people, right? Making a difference to one person, right? And inspiring others. Um, so she's the one that came to mind. Right. Thank you. That's awesome. Uh, and I love, I love what you were saying there about setting the standards or the vision of what you want to achieve and what you, what you're promising to deliver for for your people, and uh, that they're then looking to you to um to be committed to follow that through and, and get that result that's great who else would like to go next me tony cool. uh, so i'm uh, i'm a little bit um leadership is developed or grown um you you do kind of have people that are natural at it but they learned it somewhere so as a scout leader we see lots of it we often work in small teams to give the the youth uh, a chance to be leaders. And one of the things I always say is we teach you how to be a leader, but in order to be a good leader, you need to be a good follower. Because sometimes the instructions are coming from 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 me to them sort of thing. And, uh, and then I kind of remind everybody else in the team, you know, like, look, sometimes you know, there's 10 things to do and five of them are coming from me. So if the leader tells you to wash the dishes, then, um, you know, you'll need to wash the dishes. But then I also remind leaders that sometimes they need to wash the dishes. <laughs> yep, very good. 
And anyone that stands out for you, Stan? Um, I suppose uh, one of the guys called Sean Allen is a top, had the top school in Perth um, and just had a good way of like leader people mentoring stuff like yeah, I mean so much so that he moved to Margaret River so that he could surf every day and then he started his own martial arts club that's he says I don't want the biggest club now I've done that he goes I now have a select few and only teaches 120 people a week which is different from his like thousand people a week um but yeah it just has a good way of listening and communicating and and, and and working with people. Very good. Anyone else got anything to add? See? Yes. Yes. Um, the initial question of are people born with being a leader or are they developed? Initially, I'm thinking there's no way you're born with it, but then I think actually it's the opposite we are all born leaders and it's just a matter of tapping into that and um, reconnecting with that um, i think some people are born into it but that doesn't make them good leaders um, it's definitely about the skills that you learn and the people that surround you especially when you're young as to picking up um, just absorbing how people react around you and then it becomes a natural trait to be a leader but you can certainly learn it um, consciously learn it and put, create the skills that to be, create a good leader. Um, I, it's very interesting, Tony, that you lead on from um, who's, it, characters, good characteristics to have from last week and now we're doing leadership because you need all the characteristics that you identified last week to be a good leader. So integrity, um, good communication. Um, and I actually, who's a good leader? It was all the three people that I mentioned last week. <laughs> And I think we all do need to lead ourselves. So we all we all are leaders. Um, and if we're not if we're not leading ourselves, we can't rely on other people to to like lead us by the nose. We have to develop leadership skills for ourselves. Very good. Hmm. Anyone we've not heard from? Perhaps um, Chris, did you want to add anything to that? Let me unmute myself. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. I didn't hear the first part of the question, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that you asked, um, are people born or developed as leaders? It's the standard question when you're talking about leadership, isn't it? <laughs> um, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, <laughs> I thought I did, then I didn't, then I, I, I don't know. I'm not but, sure there is a right or a wrong answer, yeah. by the way. That's one that's been debated a lot over the years. Yeah. But um, these are the few traits which I've noticed in good leaders, integrity, teachability, having a direction so that they can communicate well, so it's not chaotic. Um, all these really are um, developing the two intelligences, inter and intrapersonal um, intelligences. And I'd like to put something else above that, and that would be compassion, kindness, and empathy, um, which is a bit more of, um, what do you call, um, talking about love and understanding people and connecting with them. So um, one of the people whom I admire as a leader is my daughter, and I've observed her um, as she's led people as well as organized. She's, she plans ahead. And she's very thoughtful. She thinks of the little things and she, she looks out for the underdog. Let's say if she understands that somebody is going through a difficult times, she will bring, let's say, a meal or um, treat that person out. And she takes the initiative. She's sensitive to the needs of others and caring. And, and that's the kind of leader I would rally around. Um, somebody who, um, who, who does it quietly, I mean, Maybe for me, um, I don't gravitate towards a megalomaniac kind of um, grandiose kind of leaders. <laughs> I'm, I'm more about those ones who lead quietly, but they have the support of people behind because people know 
their character. They built that relationship. It's it's basically a slow burn, a long term thing. It they pay it forward, and um, people want to know that person even outside of that organization because they are good people, and and having people at the top like that, you just want to keep on encouraging that kind of behavior. Uh, a lot of people. Um, it's like adults misbehaving and use abusing their power and leadership. And um, we always like seeing people handed the power. And in, in Shakespeare, you know, uh, there, there's a saying, um, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And I'm always like looking out for people who are, have that humility and not begging about their humility, but really like saying, um, Looking, looking out for the little guy, and they know the ground as well. They, they, they don't shy from responsibilities and leading by example. Cool, thank you. Great share. Coralie, did you want to add anything to that discussion? Oh, you'll have to unmute yourself, sorry. <laughs> Um, that was amazing what you just said there, Christopher. Um, yeah, that was everything in a nutshell, really. And sort of, so a leader that I think encapsulates all that for me would be Jacinda Ardern. I just think she's doing awesome. And she is all of that empathy and compassion. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah. I have no expert thing to say about leadership. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've added your piece. That's that's the important thing. Um, and that's another thing about the Noble Goldman platform is, it, is an opportunity for everyone to be heard and to have a voice and to speak up if, if you wish to. Uh, and then that's what we're encouraging everyone to, to develop yourself through um, through that exposure, through the opportunity to run mastermind groups if you wish to. Um, there's no obligation to, you can develop your way into that. So we are teaching leadership traits in the course of this whole system. And I think it, for me, one of the people who stand out uh, quite a lot is Mark Santos, who's actually set up this whole group. And I, over the last few months, I've only been involved since, well, second half of last year i can't remember exactly when um I, I first looked at it and was too busy you know too busy to get involved in this <laughs> and then realized that uh, as russ devan one of our one of our sort of great mentors in the in the organization he put it that uh, that this uh, is not another thing to add to your list of things to do it's the thing that makes what you're doing work and I love that that quote from Russ, and he, he's somebody I admire as, as a great leader as well. But Mark has a uh, a lovely um, disposition where he's always he's always got an ear for everybody. Uh, you know, and he'll listen to anybody's concern or anybody's question. He never gets flustered or agitated. He always keeps calm. He always responds to people at where they're at. So I think you know when it comes to communication recognizing people for where they're at and talking to them at that level whatever the level may be and everyone comes in with at a different level with different experiences and so on uh, so it doesn't matter if you're an experienced business person or you're you know you're um, an employee or you work part-time as a volunteer or something you know wh wherever you are and whatever you're doing you're welcome and you're treated with respect and uh, so respect is a, is a big word for me, I think with leadership is respecting all the people in your team. So that's kind of the first half of the call was really talking about, well, that, that age old debate, are, are leaders born or developed? And I think a few of you have really answered that question that we all have leadership skills within us. Sometimes they're latent. Sometimes we don't really, um, we don't really bring it to the fore and personality uh, can be impacted by our early childhood experiences where we may suppress our inner leadership traits um, if we've had dominant characters around us. But then there's different situations, isn't there? So you can have a, a leader will step forward in a time of stress or pressure. Somebody will sort of put their hand up and jump in and start organizing things and delegating stuff. And, and other people will, will 
would perhaps be a leader in a different circumstance, but are happy to follow a more um, dominant personality in a particular situation. So yeah, it does follow on quite nicely from talking about character last week. So uh, if anyone wants to add any traits to that, but I'd also ask you the question to consider what traits would you like to add to yourself? What things do you want to work on on yourself if you're willing to share that? And then nobody, nobody has to share anything you don't want to. But is there anything that you'd like to, that you've identified that you know you'd, you want to develop in yourself so that you can improve yourself as a leader? Anyone got any thoughts on that? Yes. Um, <laughs> something that I'm working on constantly is, um, is communication, but also pacing people, knowing where they're at, understanding where they're at so you can speak to them in that place rather than like expounding on all this stuff where they're kind of they're stuck in some situation if you're not talking to that then you, you've lost them so for me that's a skill that i keep working on yeah and i have to just acknowledge uh v as well because since i've been working with v for a few months now i've i've seen a, a massive shift in um, in, in you with, with the work that you've done on yourself through Naval Goldman and and you can see the uh, the budding leadership coming out from you now and um, and I, I would you know we've got a term in Australia I don't know if it's entirely appropriate but we talk about pocket rockets and uh, v, v for me is, a, is a, a powerful pocket rocket would you agree Glenn? Yeah sorry I nearly spat my water out there yeah so we do agree totally <laughs> Yeah, so we're seeing that leadership development in action in you. So well done. Keep up the good work. Anyone else? Yeah, Tony. The other thing is really important to, um, as I mentioned, I teach the kids about mental health. We have this negativity bias, this reactionary part of ourselves. Those triggers, when we're in those triggers, no more leadership. Okay, when we're triggered, whether uh, the teacher, a parent, boss, whoever we might be, when we're triggered, we're now into the old model of, you know, survival of the fittest. And um, keeping that in check and realizing, especially in our leadership role, um, where we go into that mode. And when we do go into that mode, owning it, apologizing cleaning it up and then putting things in place immediately to know that you know when i'm overtired when there's too many things going on when i feel betrayed when i don't feel listened to and being aware of that because when we're in that mode when we're in that reptilian brain when we are in that space we're no longer leaders leadership is a function of the flow it's a function of awareness being aware of what's going on so that we can have the compassion and see what's going on so I'm constantly monitoring my triggers and working on those and cleaning up when I am triggered. So that's just something I want to share. That's a great share, Tony. I think um, I think your your students must be must feel quite lucky. Uh, it sounds to me like you're you're a very good leader um, because th that's I think that's a key trait of being able to reflect. Uh, we're all human and we all make mistakes and we are all triggered by different things. And there are times when, as a leader, you might say something that you you regret or you didn't didn't perhaps treat someone um, as fairly as you would have liked to have done. And then with reflection, you sort of realize that and some leaders will gloss over that and go, oh, I made a mistake or too bad. They'll have to live with it. You know, whereas if you're willing to go back and admit a mistake or um, or apologize to someone or look for how you can um, put that situation right, that 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 takes a little bit more. A little bit more courage it takes introspection first of all and then it takes courage to actually go and put it right so that's that's a very important point thanks for raising that yes vicky so i think being uh, genuine and authentic is really important i think we should just be who we are yeah um you know i come from a social work background so it's a little bit different than a lot of people in ng because most people are not in that milieu um but I found that I've developed really good relationships with clients over the years because I care 
and I know I care. And, you know, if a client's coming in to pick up a food card, instead of picking it up at the front desk, I'll tell them, oh no, you have to come see me personally. And they'd be like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you can't just pick it up at the front desk. You're gonna actually have to make an appointment and you're gonna come into my office and you're gonna come see me because I wanna get to know my clients. It's not, you want the food card, that's fine. I understand you need it, but I wanna know who you are. And I want, I want us to develop a relationship together. So one example is it took two years for me to get a client to invite me to their house. And the moment she invited me for tea, I said, of course, and I was there, but it took two years. But she knew every time that she would come in for her food card, she couldn't just pick it up from, from the front desk. She had to schedule an appointment with me. And, uh, you know, I, I've worked with seniors for 20 years and I've had some of my clients for 20 years. And a lot of people can't say that. So some of my clients have seen me pregnant with both my kids. You know, they see me go through a divorce. They see me develop a new relationship. That relationship ended. You know, everything's happened. But I live, you know, although I live in Montreal, it's a relatively smallish community compared to others. And, you know, I run into some of my clients at the store. And I've always made that choice that I don't push myself on them. If they acknowledge me, I acknowledge them back. If they don't, I just move on because it's, I want them to be comfortable. It's, it's not about me, it's about them. So I, I think leadership sometimes, is it's not about us. Leadership sometimes is about other people. It's about acknowledging their traits, their, their positives, encouraging them, nurturing them, helping them grow. You know, I'm very lucky. I've had amazing mentors. I've had amazing supervisors, people over the years. I, like I feel very blessed in a lot of ways and I think that to me is leadership. I don't know another way to put it. <laughs> That's great. Thanks, Vicky. That's, um, it certainly sounds like you're exhibiting leadership there with, with all your clients. Uh, a couple right. of things I picked up from what you just said there is, so a genuine interest in people yeah. is a key component of leadership. And you, you were saying how important it is for you to get to know those people. And another thing that you didn't say, but it was there was consistency. You know, yeah. so through you talked about through all your different challenges in life, your ups and downs and your um, pregnancies and marriages and so forth, uh, <laughs> you, you still you've still maintained that consistent approach to your clients. And so you've managed your own issues to still be able to be a leader, the leader that you wanted to be and by focusing on others, which is great. But I would take that a little bit further. So if a client comes in and they ask me a personal question, I can't expect them to open up if I don't open up, right? So I'll open up to an extent. You know, I'm, I'm careful about that, but I think you can. You have to be genuine and authentic. And if a client asks me a specific question, if it's one I can answer, I'll answer it. If not, I'll kind of do a roundabout way of answering it. But how can I expect them to open up if I don't? Yes. Now that's a really a interesting question <laughs> yeah, because there are some I'm a social workers. <laughs> yeah, of course. You're, so you're in that kind of a, a game, I suppose yeah. we're going to call it that, but there are some people who, who as leaders would not, would not want yeah, to divulge anything about themselves. You know, they want to keep that distance and it's like, well, my team don't need to know anything about me. So yeah. uh, you, what you just said reminded me so much of the work of Brene Brown. I was reading a few of her yeah. books last year and so vulnerability is the word that, that came into my mind when you said that. Um, yeah. If you're willing to be vulnerable, then people also uh, respect the fact that you're human as well. Because, mm -hmm. you know, and, and like Tony said, we've, you, you've, you've got triggers the same as everybody else. And, and you've talked about they're managing your mood. Uh, and if you're willing to admit that you're human too, and you make mistakes just the same as anybody else, and, and you share a little bit about yourself, it, it helps to build that rapport with people. And so rapport is, is a key word there that you've really highlighted. So well done, thank you. Who wants to add some more to this interesting discussion? Chris. Yeah, I like to second what um, Vicky said because I also got the same word, vulnerability, consistency, authenticity, um, and 
I'm actually following somebody around um, nowadays and understanding. Um, you can all hear me, right? Yeah. You're not stalking um, anyone, are you? <laughs> I don't know. He's a mentor. Um, uh, and I, I don't know whether I'll be going to this industry, but I'm, um, I'm testing it out. It's real estate. And um, one of the things he said to me last week um, was something which really impacted me. And then it, it's, it's um, because he opened up to me and I opened up to him and we opened up to each other, he actually wants to bring me on to his team. And um, he said every time he meets a client and they develop a relationship, whenever the client calls, he would give them all the attention as if they're the center of the universe or um, to make sure that he has like, um, uh, in some cases, we, we call it emotional availability, um, just being present at the moment, not not um, being distracted. Like for example, you meet somebody and they're always on their phone. <laughs> you don't really want to be there to begin with, but he, he was present and he made me feel special. And um, those are things which uh, we really appreciate and, and like, it, it, especially in social work and in teaching, I, I've noticed um, the ones who stand out are those ones who, who have that genuine authenticity to, and they communicate that they actually care. And um, the other person is able to receive that and accept and believe that. And then they start opening up too. And that's where the communication comes. And it, it's, it's a really beautiful thing to observe and to see. And those are the little things which I've been picking up, um, um, which, which um, they matter. Um, and a lot of things can piss people off, but like when, when you show that you're there, um, they, they, they do receive it. We're all human and we all want to be heard. We all want that um, to be acknowledged, um, acknowledge our existence, acknowledge that um, we are going through things as well. Yeah, that's that's a great point. I think uh, there's there's some gold in what you just said there about being being present to people. Um, an interesting one that you said there is making me feel special. Well, you can't actually make anyone feel anything. People people's feelings come from within, but a good leader can in some way touch those buttons whatever it is inside somebody that causes them to to feel special would you agree with that uh, I've, I've noticed um there's certain leaders who who seem to have that innate gift of whoever they talk to they just they, they have this connection where they were on perhaps Kali might you might want to expand on this about because Kali's very spiritual about that that spiritual connection that you you create with people where they feel noticed they feel important they feel valued and so if a leader can do that that's then you you get the team is on board with you aren't they did you want to add something to that carly i'm putting you yeah. on the spot <laughs> um well the only thing that comes to me is the energy yeah now you can you could feel me right now. Everyone can feel me right now because you can hear me. You can see me. But if you closed your eyes, could you still feel me? In your but case, you, yes. But you can because Definitely. when I go into my heart, it takes you into yours. And I don't make you go into yours. I'm embodied in mine. It takes you into yours through a mirror, through my power to stay there when I stay there, but if you go into your mind and I'm not fully empowered in my heart to be able to stay there in the moment and Tony goes into his mind and he's thinking right now, what the hell is she talking about? Even though he probably already does know. <laughs> um, he will take me into his mind instantly if I'm not empowered and mastered in staying in my heart. So we both work that way together energetically. We don't, we may not know we're doing it all the time but the more we master being home in our actual body and not our mind all the time 
the more we bring the other person who's listening to us into their heart. And that's where it becomes you're important because you're, you're loved. I can see your true value, Christopher. I can feel your value. I, I honor that you have your daughter as the leader in your life because, I mean, that gives me goosebumps saying that because that is just so special. And so, yeah, the leader can be anyone. The leader could be the, the five-year-old laughing, showing you how to enjoy your life. The leader can be a 80 year old man on his deathbed, finally awakening to why he was born, realizing his purpose was actually done and didn't realize it all that time, all because of awareness, because he surrendered on the last breath. It's all about energy. Leadership is energy. I knew you would have a powerful share on that. I just felt it. <laughs> uh, anyone not affected by that? <laughs> I think that's 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 a fantastic observation uh, when we're connecting from the heart. And I certainly got that feeling, Tony, with you, with your students, connecting from the heart, and definitely Vicky, with your clients. You can you can feel it just the way you talk about it, the way you the way you relate to your clients. Yeah, Tony, please. Oh, you have to unmute, sorry. Thank you for all the shares here. This is such a powerful group, I have to say. But I wanted to say all of this happens ahead of time. We're talking about what we're doing when we're in the situation before we start our day, before everything begins, imagining the end, imagining the love, imagining the connection, imagining the brilliance, imagining the connection and being in the end before it even begins at the beginning of the day getting into a space before it even begins seeing all the people you're going to serve during the day and feeling bring them into your heart as kelly was talking about as because as everybody here was talking about before you even begin the day you're connected even before it begins and then there's a natural unfoldment you don't need to figure the traits out the rest of it it happens but it needs to be planned ahead of time and then letting it flow and then it feels organic and natural right and it needs to be at the beginning with that goal in mind of wanting to serve and wanting to connect um you know and that's where we have to deal with our triggers at the bit of what i was bringing at the beginning of the day when anything comes up deal with it then uh bring it into your practice the next day but it really begins if you look at all the masters and all the great people we're talking about leaders, they have a practice at the beginning of the day to get them into the space of what they want to contribute, right? So I just want to share that, sorry. Yeah, that's a great share. I think uh, Tony Robbins talks about your hour of power, you know, getting, if need be, getting up a little bit earlier to to set your, your reference for the day, you know, to set your, your terms of, of who you are, who you want to be, um, and tapping into that that inner wisdom that that we all have, and very often, you know, Jim Rohn says the things that are easy to do are easy not to. Um, we can we can easily dispense with that, or forget to do it, or just be too busy busy, you know, in our own minds to to actually allocate that time. But if we if we can create that calmness and that stillness and tap into ourselves we can set intentions about the kind of person that we want to be, be that we want to project as out into the community from an authentic self. Um, I, I'm reminded of a book that I read some many years ago, and it's one I probably should go back and reread as well. Uh, Dom, Dom Miguel Ruiz, The Four Agreements. I don't know if you've, any of you have read that one. Um, and the four agreements, uh, number one was to be impeccable with your word to you know to do what you what you say you're going to do which is something we raised when talking about character last week number two was don't take anything personally and that that relates back to your triggers that you talked about tony you know very often we can react to situations um, rather than filtering it properly and responding you know realizing that hey maybe that isn't about me it's about whatever that person is going through or what's what's going on in their world um, 
and by not taking it personally we can we can rise above those triggers we can we can put ourselves in a, in a frame of mind where we're more open to respond uh, from an authentic and a human perspective number three was to don't make assumptions so again when people you know when when you get get the whole story don't make up we all have a tendency to try and fill in the gaps when we know part of a story and we want to we have a an inbuilt thing where we want we want completeness we want we want to know the whole picture so we go and fill in the gaps and we, when that person said that what were they thinking by that well they must have thought this because if i was them i'd think that and and then so and so told me that they thought that you know so it must be what they were actually thinking and that's not what they're thinking at all you know how many times does that happen um number four is to always do your best so again you know we are all human and we do make mistakes but we can always aspire to be our better a better version of ourselves which is one of the great things that i love about the whole noble goldman concept is that we are all on that journey we're all on a journey together and we're all helping each other to to learn from these gold nuggets that come out of these conversations and to pick up the snippets that relate to you and your life and your situation and how you can apply it and then we also have each other to help us to apply it you know so we can work through as we make those changes in ourselves as we improve there will be things that come up for us the things we come up against our own our own stuff our own barriers you know and our own blockages um, and this is where we've got this fantastic support group around us who can help us to to work through those things and stan's just put in the chat box their great leaders do not offer you new eyes but offer you to stand next to them and see the world and that's that's a lovely way of putting it stan um some of the other the other things that came out of character which i think apply to leadership we talked about last week was doing your best um respect a word i mentioned earlier on honesty and integrity which which v mentioned that we we talked about last week i think um authenticity has been been mentioned a few times by a few people uh, encouraging and inspiring people, uh, being a good communicator, which helps you to do that, being interested in people. So a great character trait that is also a, a trait of leaders and, and meeting people where they're at. And there was another one there that I'm not sure. Yes, I think Tony touched on this with the Mother Teresa example was humility. You know, um, a willingness to, to be humble means to not, automatically assume because of a title that you're above everybody else uh, you may be in the in the hierarchy of an organization but that doesn't make you a better person than the people in your team so we all have a, a collective responsibility to be better people to, to work on ourselves anyone that got any other thoughts they'd like to add just conscious we're coming up for time now um I think Vicky beat you by a snippet. Sorry, Glenn. <laughs> I, I, I just want to add the aspect of mentoring. So I, I, I'm lucky enough being that I've been a social worker for 23 years that I've had the opportunity to mentor students who've just come into a job and kind of help nurture them and grow them and teach them and allow them to make mistakes because that's how we all learn. Like I learned that way. <laughs> um, letting them try things like they'll bring up an idea and encourage it let them try it and see what happens so to me i think mentoring is huge so i don't think we really talked about that here but i think that's a huge aspect of leadership is mentoring other people and it doesn't matter what level you are like it I, you know i think we, we have to allow we have to nurture we have to encourage and allow people to grow at their own pace great point and I, I work as a coach and mentor myself and as you work with people you realize you're working with yourself um yeah. you know the very things that i'm coaching people on i'm going hang on a minute this applies to me because people are a mirror <laughs> they're a reflection of yourself <laughs> Kelly's laughing at me you know it's true <laughs> we're all mirrors <laughs> so that's a great point yeah mentoring if that you, you learn the most when you teach other people for sure Thanks for that. Glenn, you wanted to add. 
that's just so spooky. I was going to say the same thing um, about mentoring. That's one of the, the one of the first questions you asked earlier was, you know, who do you admire as a leader? I don't admire the guy, um, but he was a, a manager of mine when I worked in the financial industry in London, and he was a bully. He was um, mental and physical abuse to get the job done because yeah. there was so much at stake uh, dollars. And um, fast forward 17 years after I left that industry in that company, I left as a manager, um, had been a manager for the last 10 years of a team that I built purely in the opposite way that he'd managed me when I was a youngster, 21 years old, going, going through that industry and thinking, because guys would come to me as a, as a junior and go, oh, he's a pain, he's doing this, he's doing this, he's doing this. But the management saw him as a leader because he was a top money earner. Now, I then built relationships amongst the team, not in the way to undermine or anything, just going about my business. He ended up leaving and they asked me to manage the desk and I went, why? I'm not the top money earner. And I said, no, but you've got the best relationship with everybody on this desk. You have the best relationship with the company around the globe everybody loves you just carry on and do as you're doing um it was hard to step into that role when i was sort of not really prepared for it um people said that i sort of changed a little bit when i did first step into the role but then i just went back to being myself being authentic and this is what i'm here for and i've been out of that job now coming up to god when was it 2005 i left that job um i still keep in contact with the guys that I work with there. Not so much the guys that I went to school with there when I was in Perth originally, but the guys that I built relationships in the banks I built relationships with in London, I still see them as great mates. And I so you saved my bacon, you did this, you did this. I said, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize what had gone on in the background. Um, so yeah, one of the best <laughs> leaders I'd had was a nightmare. <laughs> it was, but it was years down the road I found out why he was like that. After, he, you know, he's nearly, 80, I think now. Um, and I've found out why recently, why he was like that because of his family history. But I still think he was <laughs> archaic, <laughs> a bit of a disaster to work with. And a couple of guys got the scars to prove it. So um, it wasn't great. But th then I came into Australia just quickly. And then the first thing that I went to was a leadership course with a big mining company here. And the first thing they taught us about was the emotional bank account and listening to people and mentoring them and sitting alongside them as Stan said, and look, this is what it looks for me. How does it look for you? And what, you know, why do you come to work? Why do you do what you do? Not what's your background, but you know, where are you going? What do you, what do you want out of this? Um, and you, you start asking people those questions and they will start to open up and I start to sort of follow you and lead you in, along the path that you want to go as well. That's excellent. I think we can all relate to, examples in our in our past lives of leaders that have uh, perhaps been judged well by by an organization because they're getting perceived as getting the results and yet there might be a trail of carnage behind them <laughs> so it, it starts with with senior management determining what are the actual um, performance review uh, sort of standards that we're going to judge our leaders by is it by the dollar or is it by the impact on the team and we could go on on that topic for a very long time i mean is it is it reasonable for leaders to make unreasonable demands of their people there's a whole topic we could spend ages debating <laughs> uh, i've certainly worked under leaders like that i've worked under leaders with with what you would refer to there as um a high eq high emotional quotient ability to connect with people ability to get the most out of their team for me, that would be of more value uh, than the dollar figure. But then, you know, it, in the in the commercial world, sometimes they're looking for that driving character that doesn't really care so much about people and gets them the results that they're looking for. So that guy's manager, so the managing director of the company, had a high EQ, and he's the guy I referred to earlier and said, "What would he do?" Now I still talk to him. His few years, it's sort of in between me and the other guy in age, but he through that emotional quotient um built a stronger team that all work together for each other rather than working for themselves and actually increase the profitability of the company yeah 
uh, back in my early days, I used to work in uh, in supermarkets. I was a young um, trainee manager at 18 and then a deputy store manager at 19. And I, I worked for this guy who was a store manager who was absolutely committed to the company, a company man through and through. And uh, he had been an ex-police officer, but was asked to leave the force because he was a little too officious. Uh, the, the, the legend was that he booked his own mother for speeding when she was driving him to work one day. Um, and he used to turn up off duty and make citizens arrests and things like that because he walked drive around with the police radio on. <laughs> so, all right. So we've got a few people who have to go and I think we're at that time. So thank you so much to everybody for the great contributions today. It's been an awesome discussion. Uh, we we're every Friday morning and uh, every Tuesday evening in Perth here on our Perth Times. Watch out on the website for it. Thanks so much to our newbies there, Coralie, Tony, for coming along. Great to see you guys and to everyone else. Have an awesome day or evening or wherever, whatever the time zone is where you are. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Great call, guys. Nice to meet you all. See you later. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Good day. Bye.